Welcome back to Creative Perspectives. I'm Brandy, a transitional life coach specializing in mindful and healthy connections. Today our topic is going to be about weaning yourself off from grown children. Thank you so much for your support for this channel. It is a new channel. I mean, it's been out for seven months, but in comparison, it's still fairly new. Thank you. Today, we're gonna to go over the false sense of entitlement syndrome that we know that grown children have. We're going to go over their fear-based excuses where there's constant excuses and we're gonna talk about how to alleviate that or how to um, wean yourself out of that situation. Lastly, we're gonna talk about the taking syndrome that they tend to have as grown children. And I will tell you what you need to do and how you can protect yourself in the future from grown children because we want to have healthy connections we do not want to be stuck in the wrong type of situations that requires another individual to grow a little bit more into an adult okay we want somebody else who loves to adult with us life is already tough and we need a strong partner by our sides. And you need a strong partner by your side that can help you grow through life or go through life in an equal manner. Grown children have a tendency to have the false sense of entitlement syndrome. They're looking for someone to take care of them they are not looking to take care of themselves. They are not looking for equal partnership. They are certainly not looking out for the best interests of any of the partners they get with. They are masters at hunting down people who look like they have everything together. Why? Because they still have the mommy daddy syndrome. Hey, I want you to take care of me. I'm grown, I could work, I could do for myself, I could provide for myself, but I choose not to. So I would rather have someone else take care of all the burdens for me. How can you spot out a grown child who has a false sense of entitlement? Well, number one, they want to examine every facet of your life in lightning speed. So they want to know so much about you, too soon, too fast, it's not a natural process. And in your eyes, you may be intrigued by the individual, especially if they appeal to your eyes. But you still have to be careful because these grown children, they are out for themselves. So if you don't want to deal with heartache and pain, ensure that you take your time and look at that fact, which is a grown child wants to rush. It's no different than a narcissistic type of person. They know what they want. They've already calculated the type of individual that they need in order to sustain in life because they haven't done the necessary work that they need to do to become an adult. We can be older in age, but we can still be children in nature internally as far as the way we think and how we act and everything that's going on inside of ourselves, okay? People who don't want to do the work in life to be an adult, to be responsible, they want to seek out someone like you and me who have their lives together and who's always trying to work towards building their lives up because you are their great escape. When you entertain a grown child, you are the great escape. Why? Because they're lazy. They don't want to do any work. They don't want to build. They just want to intrigue you enough to get in your home, in your space, ask you whatever is necessary to be asked, and exercise different abusive strategies, whether it's verbal, mental, spiritual, and sometimes if you're not careful and if you are not strong enough, and I won't even say strong enough, it's just you have to get the sign when somebody starts uh, to test you and eliminate them right away, okay? It normally starts off spiritually and emotionally 
and verbally first. And the purpose behind that is so that they could try to harm your self-esteem as much as possible. Because in their eyes, although you are better than them, they don't want you to feel like you're better than them. So the only thing they could come up with is verbal assassinations, mental and emotional tricks, just like narcissists, <laughs> in order to gain control of the situation. Why do they do that? Because you are the prize. They're not a prize. They have to rely on someone else to take care of them. So if they can find someone and be like, oh, that's a nice individual, smart, funny, educated, they make some money, and I cannot, I don't belong in their world, but I want that world. And I don't plan to do anything in my life to make my world any better to be a comparable or comparable partner. So therefore, I need to work on this individual so I can cut them down so bad to where I can gain some type of control because I need a place to live. I need a place to sleep and I need a place to eat and I need someone to take care of me. And I see you as my benefactor. Okay. Now you understand my point. When a person has nothing to offer you, but they love and they are so intrigued by you, all they want is to be part of your world. In order for you to protect yourselves from individuals like this, first of all, take your time. So you can identify where they work, how long they've worked there, ask them questions about where they've lived, how long they reside in certain locations. So if they're always moving, you know that's instability. And there's no security in that instability. You could look at how they have lived their lives as far as their education. Not everybody needs to go to college because some people do, they can own businesses and they may not have necessarily gone to college. But they are living in their life purpose. But most people who are grown children, they are not living in their life purpose. And some may not have identified their life purpose. So they want to identify intrigue and captivate and become captivating to the person that is going or that they would love to be their victim. Okay, so they'll dress nice for you. They will act nice. They'll do everything right. And those are a real person is not perfect. Even if you want perfection, you'll probably get 70 to maybe 80% of what you need out of a real individual who's technically a good person because you're not going to agree on every area. However, when it comes to the stability of both individuals, you will both be comparable. You will both be equal in those areas. You will both be able to see equal reciprocity as I always talk about in my videos. Okay, But a person who only wants the entitlement, they're just intrigued by your lifestyle and they want it and they want to work themselves in. So they're why you th some people think of it as like, oh, they don't take no for an answer. No. Those are the ones you have to watch out for. You do. Sometimes it can be romanticized, but still you need to be careful. Okay? Man or woman, it doesn't matter. If you're looking for real relationships, genuine connections, healthy connections, then you must be mindful about who you're allowing into your space. Another way you get covertly find out about who they are is by who they hang around and who they call friends, who they choose to um, spend a lot of time with. Okay, If they have children, are they actually spending time with their children or are they full of excuses? Okay, Everything that looks good may not be so good for you. An individual who has a false sense of entitlement, so they move in quick or they want to move in quickly with you. So it's part of the act. A grown child also tends to want to date you as often as possible. 
They make you feel like the king or queen that you genuinely are underneath it all. But their purpose for you is not the same as yours is for them. Okay, We all want to see the best in people. We want to push people to their greatness. But a grown child, they don't feel the self-value and the self-worth. So the best thing they could do is get with somebody who has it and then annihilate what you have. Okay, It turns out to be a form of jealousy. Envy is derogatory when it comes to having it unequally based in your relationship. Okay, All right, now, even if the sex is great, you still got to be careful because, oh, yeah, he's, he may be having sex with you, but he's taking way more than what he's given in the bedroom from you. Okay, And then sooner or later, when the honeymoon phase phases out, then you're going to be able to see, hey, you're in for the wrong thing. So if you're looking for genuine connections, it may be time for you to uproot and leave the situation. Um, a lot of times what could be a possibility is you call a lawyer first and say, look, I have this individual in my home. If you had allowed it to go that far, if you did not allow it to go that far, then you're good. Cut them off when, during the dating phase. Okay. Um, and another way you could find out is if they cannot pay. Okay. So if they always have excuses or my money's kind of funny type of deal, then they're just not ready. And that's the easiest way to cut out the dating. Uh, with the person, the individual like that, because it's through the wallet that you will learn that. Because a healthy courtship is about dating and getting to know each other. And sometimes it doesn't have to cost money. You could take a walk, you could take a hike. There's so many different ways you can get to know someone without the use of money. But you want to make sure that they can court you. If they can't, that's a instant red flag. <laughs> no money equals they're not ready and that's okay. And you want somebody that's ready. So if you are waking up at four in the morning, five in the morning, you have a long eight to 10 hour day, you get home and this individual is just laying on the couch or if they don't live with you, they're available all the time. And they're trying to see if you're available all the time. It's more like a distraction for you. Those are other covert ways of being able to see who this individual is because busy people they really are genuinely busy so if you were successful and this person says they're successful you'll be able to find out by their time okay. and through their money if they can court you correctly moving on to point number two they have the i me syndrome right, is they are takers they have the me syndrome only they come up with all kinds of ways to weaponize verbal abuse. If you do not know what verbal abuse is, you have covert abuse, which is through actions, and then you also have the actual verbal abuse through verbal assassinations of your character, your looks, whatever they may have in their arsenal for you, you will endure up front. First, they get to know you just like everybody else. Every, think of them like a snake. Most snakes, they kind of look. You know, they don't just come out to strike and attack. They look to see if it's okay to strike and attack. So once you allow yourself to become available to their strikes and their attacks, that's when you'll actually see it start to happen. It can be something as a little starting out as, oh, I don't like red lipstick or something like that. Uh, it's only because you are the it, you know, in their lives and through their eyes. You have yourself together. They don't want no one else taking that from them. The best thing for you to do in a situation like that is get rid of them <laughs> right off the top. It saves you years of dealing with an individual like that. Okay, they're takers. It's all about themselves. And even if you voice your opinion or what your wants and needs are, they'll find a way to deflect it, discount it. They'll have actual verbal assassinations or they'll use covert ways to cause harm to you. And here are some examples. They do withholding, purposefully not telling you what 
is really going on uh, with them. Okay, they keep it a secret, lots and lots of secrets. They always try to victimize themselves. They undermine you, they trivialize everything. Um, they're so dramatic. They try to do ordering where they try to boss you around, but they haven't earned anything in your life to even come to you in that manner. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, I think of it, and I hate to use these words, but back in the day, you know, we, um, we all know about slavery in the country, right? So it's the worst form of horror and of different types of abuse, verbal, physical, spiritual, everything. So they come in like they're trying to be your slave driver. And then every time you make a move, it's a criticized uh, opinion that they want to impose on you. A person like that who has nothing to offer you, just remember that. They don't have anything to offer you. So the only thing they can do is trickery. And that's the way they have to keep you and maintain you is through trickery. Okay? You can call it narcissism, whatever you want to call it. But just keep in mind, their job is to sustain their position or try to get into your life, okay? And smart people, they get rid of them fast. Some people can't do that because maybe they don't know the signs yet, so it takes them a little bit more time. And that's okay as well, as long as you recognize it and you start weaning them out of your life or you just flat out get them out of your life. And sometimes, unfortunately, it might um, you might need law enforcement involved or something like that. Okay, but they're takers. It's all about what can they gain from you? What can they take from you? So if they got to pretend like they like you, if they got to pretend like um, you're the best thing since Wonder Bread, that's it. They're only looking at the qualities that you possess that will give them a place that's better than where, where they came from. Or give them something equal, but they have nothing to give back to you. Our last and final point is they have rationalized excuses. They tend to be very flaky. Um, you cannot depend on them. They are full of excuses. Just they're excuse, they're excuse magnets. Okay, so anything you go to ask them, there's an excuse for everything. Some of it is pretty much fear-based to where they may have a low self-esteem. They may not know how to really... Um, navigate the world because you're so far ahead of them however it's not your job to help them help themselves okay we as individuals we have our own path to walk in life and sometimes it requires us to have that isolation in order to grow and we can have through that isolation we could also build a team that can help us with our circumstances currently to help us be able to help ourselves. The difference is a grown child, they're not in it. The regular, just like um, uh, individuals who are trying to learn and change. They do not want to change. They say they want to change, but there will be no actions towards change because they've gotten away with the excuses the abusive tones. That's how they come in trained with it for you. So that's why you have to be careful. You don't want a trained grown child to fill the space in your mind, your heart, your spirit under any circumstances. You want to release them as soon as possible. Don't even let them get past a couple of dates by understanding those simple signs. They rush they act like you're the best thing since Wonder Bread. <laughs> and I shouldn't use Wonder Bread, but they act like you're the best thing that they've ever seen in their whole entire life. Now, you could really be an intriguing individual, but it takes time to even get to know someone who is a intriguing individual in our eyes. We, you don't have to rush. They want to use uh, sex as their weapon. Like, oh, I, the sex is great, and then that just should be it. That should do the trick. No, be smart, honey, because you can have the same type of individual equal field with you that can do the same thing for you. And there are so many individuals out there on looking for the right person in all classes and all age groups. So make sure you pick correctly. A rationalized excuse is also a psychological defense mechanism that they have maintained 
throughout all of their relationships. We are done with all of our points. The only thing I want you to really take out of this is wean yourself out of situations that require you to not be with a fulfilled individual like yourself. If you are fulfilled, you want someone else equally fulfilled and equally healthy who has a, a, a healthy attachment style. I remember I took the test for um, attachment styles. I had a secured attachment style. And you want someone with a secured attachment style. And if they don't, that's okay. You just don't want somebody coming into your life, invading your life with a whole bunch of games to be a grown child in your life. Because all it does is create more burdens for you if you allow it into your life. So we want to maintain mindful and healthy connections. We want to be able to identify what's not healthy, okay? Rushing is not healthy. Um, it's actually a big red flag that you should have. If you've been alone for a while, in my book, it's better to be alone and happy and content and have a successful life path than it is to be uh, in the presence of someone who does not value you as an individual because they're just there for themselves or they're angry when they cannot have their way in your life. You want healthy individuals who are actual, actually mature, okay? So we are done. We talked about entitlement. We talked about um, uh, the taking syndrome. And then we talked about the excuses. Think of a time when you ran into a grown child and how you found out. Think about what you found out and leave them in the comments of what were some of the symptoms that you noticed, what were some of the behaviors that the person displayed to you, um, and think about your position in it. Were you acting too fast, too impulsively? Um, did you invite it into your life? And now that you have it in your life, if you have it in your life, what can you do to change it and make it different for yourself. If you are religious in the Bible, it does have scriptures based on how we are all to be fruitful. Okay, if you have a partner who's just sitting around, laying around on the couch, don't want to work, always quitting jobs when they know there are bills due, and then they want to ask you for money, and it's just pretty much just creating a burden in your life, what are you going to do? What can you do? What should you do? Okay, I understand that some individuals, they want someone there. So it doesn't matter if the person is a toxic individual or not, or if they're a grown child or not. They just want somebody there. But if you're lonely, at what cost do you want them there? Because they're not elevating you. They're tearing you down in the process. So I'm going to end on that note. I look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. And if you haven't, like, share, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to receive my upcoming videos.